Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today's video is going to be taking a deep dive into shield sets. It's probably a topic of big conversation for a lot of the player base. And I would imagine many players don't actually understand some of the intricacies that can happen with shield sets. I've also been doing some data mining and some testing on the new bolster set and I found some pretty crazy discoveries that might change the way that you build champions, build teams and could definitely have an impact potentially in the top arena meta. So without further ado, I want to go in and give a full breakdown of how shield sets work and then we're going to take a look at the bolster set and I'm going to show you some practical elements just to demonstrate the testing that I've done just so you don't have to take my word for it, you can see it in action. So it's been a while since I've done a proper PowerPoint presentation for the, the For Science playlist to talk about the inner workings of the game. But we're here, we have the PowerPoint open, we are going to be talking about shields. If you've ever wondered how shields work or ever have a question about shields, everything should be answered here. So what do we know about shields? Shield is a an effect that you get in game. It effectively gives you bonus HP or effective HP, another word for that. If your champion starts with 30,000 HP and you've obviously got that defense number that will reduce the incoming damage, the shield is just basically bonus HP on top that the enemy has to either remove the buff or kill through that buff. It had some various small usages. The biggest one probably that everyone will be aware about is the infinity comp that was used in clan boss where someone figured out how to use Brogni very cleverly with buff extension and corpulent cadaver to basically hit some crazy numbers. I think the world record for it at the moment stands at about 1.1 billion per run, something crazy like that. That's like the biggest use of a shield we've seen, but it has a lot of uses outside of that, especially on HP based champions where you can grow their base HP because obviously she Shields are built from the HP of the champion wearing the set or casting the ability. So without further ado, let's dive in. So when we talk about shields, there are two effects. And what I mean by effect, I mean the buffs and that you see in game, they're called effects. There are two types of shield effects in the game. There are ones cast by artifact sets and ones cast by skills. Now it's important you understand the difference here because both are unique and therefore will stack with each other. They are coded differently even if they behave the exact same way. That means if you have a shield set on Brogni and you then cast his A3, you will get double the amount of shields because you will get his A3 shield on top of your shield set. Obviously artifact shield sets, you need to be aware they have a time limit. You can't reapply them if they expire where obviously skills can be reapplied. The only thing to call out here is the blood shield accessories that you can get from clan versus clan. These are unique in the sense that in order for it to calculate the shield amount, it has to have the damage equation. So therefore it's considered a skill because you need to hit someone to be able to calculate that shield. It can't be calculated based on your champion or in advance. So that's the only thing to note with that. That is coded as a skill, not an artifact set. So let's talk about artifact shield sets. We now have three in the game. We had the shield set that's been around for a very long time that you can farm in Fire Knight. We've also got divine sets. These come from, I believe, arena only. Uh, sometimes you get them through promotional offers. Sometimes you get them through the missions, but generally you get them from finishing arena. That is like divine speed, divine offense, divine life. And I think there's another one, I think divine critical rate. That will give you another shield on top. Um, you can use it as a two piece. You can pair it with something else. And now we also have bolster. Bolster is the new set that I showed you in the forge. The one available on forge season pass three. And really the main reason why I'm making this video for you today. Each combination of these sets calculates from a total HP of your champion going into battle. So if your champion goes in with 30,000 HP and you put a 10% aura on top, it will add another 10% on top of that 30%, but not off the 30%, it'll be off your base stats, remember, aura is based off base stats. So it is the total gain of your HP from your base stats, all the different bonuses you get from Great Hall, add that all together with an aura, that is the amount of shield you will get from the shield sets. Obviously shield and bolster give you 30% of your total HP. Divine will give you 15% of your total HP being a two piece set. Each set will also add into each other for your champion. So if you have a shield set with a divine shield, you will get the 30% plus the 15% in there combined. That gives you a combined, you know, 45% shield. If you're champion is paired with another champion that has either a shield or a bolster set 
that also gets added into the shield. So if you have two champions on 100,000 HP and they both have shield, you'll have a 60,000 shield because you'll have 30,000 on each champion. It will add together for a combined shield. Divine, however, will only apply to the champion that is wearing it as it is a self shield, not an ally shield. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But what this does basically means if you wanted to, you could run four shield sets with four divine sets, uh, with one divine sets on each champion, rack up all those shields and make give yourself a massive effective HP. Obviously, the problem with shield and divine sets, uh, if, if you're using it competitively or against any champion such as Rian the Conjurer, Madame Cerise, Prince Kaima, they can remove the buff. So your mass effective HP could be removed in one go and then all those artifact sets are useless. Bolster is different. Bolster cannot be removed. And we're going to talk about the effects of Bolster in a minute because it's important to understand that. But that's the thing to keep in mind. Shield and Divine can be removed. Bolster cannot. Let's talk about some skill shields. This one is pretty straightforward and pretty easy to understand. There's only one type, just a shield. It'll be based on the champion's description. Sometimes there'll be conditions to when the shield goes in. Um, Lana Tharel, the latest champion, is a good example of how the shield can vary. Shields will be in addition to any artifact shield, as I said before. If you do a Krisk shield at the start with a shield set, you will get the shield set artifact set icon show, and then you will get the skill from his passive show. And they do have different icons. You can see the one for artifacts looks a bit more like a checkered shield where the ones for skills are basically 50-50 with a line down the middle. I'll show you an example when we get in the game to test these things. But skill shields can be protected if they have a protection set on the champion or if their ability spe specifies there is a protection on there, such as Brogny's A3, that shield is unremovable. I don't think there's many unremovable shields. I think Lana Tharel's a new one that can do it. Brogny's obviously the staple shield champion that a lot of people talk about. And of course, protection set can be used universally on any shield champion. Passive shields such as Krisk or Blood Shield or any other passive shield that happens is also considered a skill, a skill shield, self shields, such as Lana Thau's A1, Virgis on his passive and different things. They're all considered the same thing. They are all a skill shield and they will stack with artifact. So I hope everyone is with me so far. There are two distinct shield types effects. One's an artifact, one's a skill, and they behave differently and they interact together separately. They stack. Now let's talk about bolster. These are, this is some of the discoveries that I've done through testing. So bolster is a new shield set. It's literally taught coded as shield 2.0. And the way the bolster works, it is now a protected 30% shield. And the wearer also gets 10% heal on each turn. So I always thought of it a bit like a hybrid protection shield and guardian set. Playroom have basically called it a shield with regen. Whichever way you look at it, it's about the same. The 10% heal on each turn shouldn't be ignored because if you're putting the shield set, you're going to want to have that champion with a high amount of HP. So therefore, the more HP you add, the more the heal becomes more valuable. It kind of benefits itself. It's a really good idea. The thing with bolster, it's protected with mode one. Now that's going to make no sense to anyone, but on the next slide, we're going to have a discussion around protection modes and what that means in terms of in-game performance and the way it interacts but it is protected with mode one and that is important to know. Bolster will behave the same way as shield set in the sense that you go into battle, you get a shield for three turns, it has the little protection color around it that you see with other protection uh, related effects. And of course it'll expire after three turns and it can't be reapplied. Now here's the important thing that I discovered. If you combine Bolster with any other artifact shield set, that is divine or shield set or another Bolster set, it will grant the entire shield protection. So if you go into battle with one bolster, it could be the most terrible bolster set you've had in the world, and three other shields, the entirety of every single shield will now become effectively a bolster shield. It will be protected. This means that not only does bolster come in and add a lot of value, it's not replacing shield. I know a lot of people came out with it with a video saying, you know, pay to win, we're replacing all the artifacts we can get in game. This actually makes shield set incredibly more valuable in the game now. You can basically go into Fire Knight, farm as much as you want to get a damaged substat focused shield set, then bring a bolster support and that shield is protected. 
You don't need to have the bolster being perfect substats, which I think a lot of people were concerned about was how quickly can we get these bolster sets out? Well, you don't need to because as long as you've got a good shield set and you bring bolster with it, that other shield set is going to be protected. This is massive. If you think of what you can achieve with this, three shield sets, you don't need all four to be bolstered. You just need the one bolster. It could be the worst bolster set in the world. It's a bit like stone skin. doesn't matter what substats you have in a stone skin set. It's powerful even on its own. And I think this is the same thing here. And I did do some testing on team position and I found no impact on team positioning. Even to the extent that I went into Doom Tower, I'm going to show you these tests. I tested it against Madame Cerise, who guarantees to do buff removal. She can't remove the shield. Key things to take away here. Bolster is protected mode one, which we're going to talk about next. And Bolster will protect any subsequent artifact shield you add into your team. The total shield becomes protected regardless of the strength of the bolster shield. Okay, if you're still with me, let's talk about protection modes. So pretty much for most of the other champions in the game, this isn't really an impact. We only saw protection mode on bosses, bosses such as Bommel, who did that increase attack, um, Head of Wrath with his little vengeance buff. I think the Dark Fey counter as well for that little um, counter that, that, that she does. Those things were the ones that were carrying protection modes. Uh, but now we've got more protection mode ones. So let me explain what this means. If a buff has some form of irremovable effect, as in the buff cannot be removed, the duration cannot be re reduced, and that, those sorts of things, they get a, an additional clause when this skill effect called protection mode. And there's two modes here. Protection mode zero, which is the most common one along all these skills, means that the effect is protected against enemies, such as protection set, you can't interact with it, but allies can interact with this ability. So that means if you have a protected buff, for example, Brogni's A3 shield, that duration can be extended. He can grow that shield. Uh, it could probably be spread if you were in a team and you, you had a revive. You could do anything you want as an ally, but the enemy can't remove it. It probably can't reduce the duration. It can't, um, in it can't interact. It probably can't steal it because it's a protected buff. Now, protection mode one, which is what Lonatharil's secondary shield on his A2, the one that you get that protection mode, and also bolster now, that's protection mode one. That basically means you cannot interact with it at all. Allies and enemies can't interact with it. It's an important consideration for the next slide when we're going to talk about how that interacts with Bolster. There are only two champions, I think, that can do that protection mode one um, at the moment. I think it's Lana Tharil, and I think it's another champion as well that does it, um, which is rather recent. It seems to be a new thing that they're doing. But it basically means you cannot interact with the buff in any way. It will just run its duration until you reapply it if it is a skill or if you start a new round. So how does that work with bolster being protection mode one? Well, the shield duration of bolster cannot be increased or decreased. You can't use Demitha's A2. You cannot use uh, Anchorite's, you know, got that ability to extend buffs. You can't extend buffs with bolster. It will be a fixed three turn and it will run out. You can't grow that shield either. You can't use Brogni's A2 with bolster. I tried it multiple different ways. It doesn't work. And then if you also are using a subsequent shield set, so an additional shield set or a divine shield set with that, those can't be grown either. Once a bolster is present, that shield becomes protected mode one. You cannot do anything with it. The shield also can't be buff spread. If they were to ever introduce a protected single target shield protection mode one, it would mean it couldn't be spread to other allies. Um, but it's not really that much of a problem right now because bolsters AOE anyway. Um, the only possible way you can bypass bolster shield is you either bring a champion that can ignore shields. There are a few, probably Faceless is one to note, um, probably Mortum uh, Macabre with his passive, Sky Piercer on Baron's passive, uh, Lua's A3. There's a bunch of other champions that can do it. But you either bring a champion that ignores the shield or you breach the shield. You have to damage your way through the shield. Now that, that might not sound too difficult because not many people use shield buffs. But when you've got four champions in a shield buff that is of, say, say the for example, say like you're running a double Mountain King with Bolster, with another shield set, and you're running maybe a third shield set in there with another 110,000 HP champion like a Brogni or an Osuga. Pretty easy to scale those champions up to those numbers. You're talking 100,000 effective shields. It's all protected. You have to breach that 100,000. Now, if you can get a debuff on these champions, great. But when you start factoring in Necret, when you start factoring in block debuffs, when you start factoring in a bunch of other things, cleanse, strengthen, 
you quickly start to realize how powerful Bolster is going to be. And remember, if you bring a Mithrala, and the Mithrala is really fast, and you bring some sort of Morley in there as well, you could have a Morley and shield set with a double Mountain King with a Mithrala. Mithrala shield will add on top of the Bolster shield with a strengthen. This is going to be very difficult to overcome. It is going to change the way that we play the game. So back in the game, obviously Bolster can be acquired from Forge Pass Season 3. I bought the Forge Pass as soon as it came out. I was not too negative about Season 1 and Season 2. I'm now really positive about Season 3 because this set is so good. And even outside of Arena, keep in mind, at the start of every round, this will apply. So if you're starting a round with a 100,000 HP Bolster Champion, you're going to get a 30,000 shield that can't be removed by enemies. That's powerful in Doom Tower. That's powerful in other areas. Uh, one thing to note about Bolster, you cannot buff strip it with Seer, so be careful. Don't think that Shield Set will work the same way as Bolster with Seer, it will not. So what I want to do now is just show you the testing to demonstrate this, okay? So what we're going to be using is some champions here. I have got Nari the Lucky, squishy old champion that's at level 50. He is in a basic rubbish Bolster set. You can see I've not leveled it at all, but it's just there. And it's going to give me around about 21,758. So I have some maths on the left here. That's going to be around about 6.5k shield that I'm going to get here. We've also got a Brogni that I have as a shield set. He is here. He's in a proper shield set. He's actually built properly. 110,000 HP. That's what I said. With a, with a base HP of 23,000, it's not too difficult to scale this up. You know, this gear is not crazy. It's not mental. I've only got a double roll there. There's a 60% HP there. He's in speed with a double roll HP. They're pretty good boots, but they're not crazy. Got a double roll. You know, we're not sitting there. There's a 60% HP chest, and then we've got a triple roll up here. So it's good gear, but I'm not sitting here carrying insane amount of, of HP. I'm just picking the primary stats, scaling it properly. The, the thing is not even at, these two are not even at 16. I could get even more if I wanted to, to push, push it even higher. So what I'm trying to say here is, if you've got a base HP of 22, 21,000 champion, it's quite easy to some extent to scale it up to an 80 to 90,000 base HP, if not higher, to get that shield value. So we've got Brogni here, and I'm also going to use a third champion just to show that uh, you can have multiple shield sets with the Ballstone. It'll all work the same way. So we're going to be using my lowly trusted level 40, if I can find her. We've got her in shield set, 27,366 HP. So she is going to give us an 8.2k shield. Brogni will give us a 33,000 shield. So you can see we've got probably an effective shield if we add all three together of around about 47,840. What I want to do first is just show you the bolster in effect and all the abilities that we have with bolster here. So let's just get rid of these. I'm going to throw in Nari and we're going to throw in Demitha. Demitha obviously is great for extending buffs, unkillable. You know, she's a bit of a, she's practically a legendary. So we've got a three turn buff here. There's the shield. You can see, take a note here of the shield bar. It's not exactly perfect because it does some freaky stuff depending on how much max HP you have. Uh, it never really fully fills the bar unless you're doing an infinity comp and even then it's a bit funky. But the key thing to note here is look at the bars now because when we add another shield, you'll see how it adds together. The first thing I want to show, if I try to extend the buffs, it will not extend the buff. It stays the same. So that's what protection mode one is doing. I can't interact with this shield at all. That's the way that that works. I can add another shield. That's her A1 shield skill going on. And again, they can't remove my shields. They can only remove the one I applied. So that's the first test. Now, the second test is bringing in a Brogni and a secondary shield. So thing to note here, look at the strength of the shield. We've got the shield strength here. It's much bigger now. So that is showing that the shields are being added together, but still protected. Why? We're going to watch Cyrus try and buff strip. If the secondary shield, the Brogni shield, which is more substantial, could be removed, we'd expect this HP bar to drop, to shrink. It doesn't. So again, look, we're going to extend it. We can't interact with that other shield now. It's been converted to a protected shield. If I try to extend and grow that shield, the text is missing. If you've got a normal shield on or even a, a protection mode zero shield like Brogni's A3, you'll see the words grow shield show when he uses that ability. You don't see it here. So we're just going to cycle through here. Now watch Sarah. She's going to A3. Notice how the HP bar has not moved. She cannot remove the secondary shield that Brogni is wearing, even though it's not bolster because it's been part of the bolster. And you can see there, I've just been chunked for 24,000. The Nari shield would have been 6,500. 
So if that had been removed, but just not visually, he'd have no shields left, but he still has at least 50,000. We estimated uh, with Renegade, it would have been 47. If we take Renegade out, I'm just using some math on my other screen here, it would be about 39,000. We got Chunk for 25, it's about 15,000 left, I'd say. That makes sense. So now let's throw in a third shield set. We're going to throw in a secondary normal shield just to show you that it's not based on the, the quantity of shields of a type. Once you detect that bolster, everything becomes protected. What we're also going to do as a test, I'm going to move Nari to the final position in the team so that we can check that team order is having no impact. So we've got a Brogni in a shield set, we've got a Renegade in a shield set, and then we've got Nari in a bolster set. So again, when we look at the shield, everything's protected. You see all the different counts of shields growing as well. Again, check things. Can we grow it? No, we can't. Madam Cerise will try to buff strip. Again, the shield remains the same. Now I'm just going to do some quick maths when we watch this here. I have tested it myself. It's a bit tricky. You'll see what I mean. But we can see he took 13,800. So I have on my, my other screen here a brief little calculation that kind of shows um, that just helps me. So really, if we've had a 47,840 shield, which is what we calculated based on having these shield set combines, I should have around about 34,000 left in Nari shield over on the left here. So what I want to test here now is how much more we can take. So 14,462, and then we lose the shield. Now, here's the tricky, here's the tricky bit to notice here. When a shield is depleted, it doesn't show you how much of the damage that that enemy did to the remaining shield it just shows you the damage to the hp pool it almost like replaces it it can't it doesn't seem to stagger it so even though you saw the 19,000 and with the two hits before we had about 19,000 hp left he actually crit so if you crit on my nari with decreased defense i've probably taken like 35,000 so you saw 19,000 damage go on the screen there but what you didn't see was the shield amount that was re removed this is the tricky thing with testing this. It's quite hard to know how much shield you have. There's no indicator. But my testing that I've done here has shown quite consistently that we have got a 47,800 shield and that is depleted first before we take damage. Obviously, he's going to die now. There's an example of how much damage, 46,000. Obviously, he took 19,000 before on a crit. We can run it again just to be safe. We're going to do exactly the same thing. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to extend, I'm going to use... Um, Demitha's A2 to basically remove the, the decreased defense buffs because they're a bit annoying. It, it hopefully will reduce some of the incoming damage we're taking so that we can track it more accurately to make sure this is exactly what we're seeing. So we get the first buff strip, can't remove it, it's protected, they cycle through their abilities bit by bit. We're on one time speed so we can monitor it and then Tayral's going to hit us for 14,710. Now I'm going to remove all these debuffs so we can see again we can't increase the duration of the shield. We get hit for 13, 6, 10, then 14, 1, 2, 9. So we have about 5,000 left. Then we get hit for 10,000 there. So again, we're not seeing the 5,000 damage, but you can see if the shields are not added and being removed, we wouldn't have had that much shield value. We basically got 42,449 effective HP from the shields and none of the shields individually add up to that. So they are adding together, they're being protected together and Bolster is working in the way that I sort of talked about before. We're just going to do one more final test here. I've not decided to run bolster this time so we can actually see how things are working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run A1 with Demitha, I'm going to A3 with Brogni to show the skill stacking and then I'm going to extend. So you can see how Brogni shield being protection mode 0 can be extended but the bolster set cannot. So we're going to run Demitha A1, we're going to run A3 here, everyone gets another shield, we get that protection value and watch the durations of everyone's buffs, goes up to A3. Great. So that's working in protection mode zero. All this is going to get buff removed now, except for the shield. But what I should be able to do still, once this, uh, we'll just speed it up a second. Someone will get hit. I should be able to grow this shield here, even though, just do that. It's in a protected state because it's protection mode zero. So grow shield. This will be the text you should see show up there. And the shield has been grown. Not much because my Brogni is not built for damage, but that's how we know. We can, we can grow his shield. Anything with protection mode zero does work. Anything protection mode one. So this is important if you're going for the, the fusion. Lonatharil's A2 when there's a dead ally. Not the first 20%, but the secondary one. Let's just bring that up on screen. So this ability here, his first shield, which is a three turn 20%, that's not protected at all. And once the dead ally is down, 
then the shield instead becomes protection mode one, which means it cannot be removed, it cannot be increased, it cannot be reduced, it cannot be, uh, but the, the, the strength of the shield cannot grow. You can't do anything with it. It will last for the three turns. Nothing can happen to it. You cannot even remove the buff with Seer. So you've got to keep that in mind. Don't use Seer with Bolster if you expect to be able to strip those buffs or with Lonatharo. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, a bit of a, a lecture video for this one so you can learn everything about shields. I personally think Bolster is a game changer. The more I look into it, the more things I can think about I can do with it. I'm going to be seeing if I've got some time tonight to basically test some crazy double mountain kings or something with my Asuga um, just to see what kind of numbers I can get and whether or not I can just basically make an invincible team with a Bolster set that doesn't have to be perfect. I would definitely 100% recommend to anyone, do not create these without rank and rarity charms. Make sure you use the substats that you want. Like I've got loads of substats here that I hold onto. So I've got, for example, 174. I will use all of these substat charms to get me some HP on here. And if you want, you could always run some crit rate, crit damage substats as well. Save your rank and rarity. These things add a lot of value to getting good equipment out of this. Don't just craft if you run out. You can get more from the bazaar if you have it. Normally, I wouldn't buy them, but for the for this current period, I'm going to buy these every week so I can make sure that all of my bolster equipment is given the best opportunity. We don't know what kind of cycle the Forge Season Pass is going to be on. We had two for Instinct. This is the first one with bolster. We don't know if Season 4 is coming back, when it's coming back, if it'll have bolster, or even if it'll have another set. So we really want to maximize the value of what we have here. We want to make sure we get as many. You should get around about 205 to 210 five to six star crafts if you have bought the forge pass that's a good amount to be able to get you some decent gear just use your charms another thing to note for all you free to play players obviously if you don't want to buy the forge pass they actually did increase the value of the free pass a little bit in the previous past seasons you had about 400 of these rare charms you now get about 700 you get i think an extra five crafts of these five to six star so even if you're not buying the Forge Pass here, you can still go and make yourself some crappy three to four star gear, stick it on a champion, and then use three other champions who have good shield sets. You can get value out of the Forge Pass even as a free player here. It is a great set to use. I 100% recommend people focus and make sure you complete the free pass just to give yourself some ability to craft even four to five stars. You will get a decent amount from four to five stars. I think my instinct set here, you can see, I only ever created four, uh, five to six stars and I've still got this left over that I could create. There's enough here to make 80 pieces. So 100% I would recommend you complete the free pass. You will probably find a use for even a terrible bolster set because of the shield, the way that it works with shield sets. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I do these four science videos from time to time when new information comes into the game to try to help people understand the deeper sort of intricacies of Raid Shadow Legends. Let me know in your comments below what you are going to be doing with this set. Are you even going for it? Did you decide to buy the Forge Pass because of this set? Does this video make you reconsider it even further now that we know it actually increases the value of our existing shield sets, even if the shield, even if the bolster set is rubbish? So with that said, I'll catch you in the next video.